talk copywriting and let me ask you, are you struggling with your copywriting? Is writing effective sales copy important for your business? Do you have a product or service that you are struggling to describe in a way that will make your customers want to buy it from you? Well, I want to talk to you in this video about the key steps in writing a sales letter that's going to make an impact on your audience. And it's a framework which I hope will help you to understand some of the important aspects of the psychology you need to join up in order to make your sales copy effective. And this is a step by step process. You have to take your audience on a psychological journey, literally, in order to help them to uh, understand they have a problem, understand that you have the solution and that they can make their lives so much more wonderful by buying it from you right now. So step by step process and the first step in the process is setting out the problem. So you have to literally ask them, have they experienced the problem? You need to remind them that they have this problem, that it's causing them problems in their business, in their life, with their family. And the status quo is no longer acceptable, that you, you can't understand why they're putting up with all this pain and discomfort and problems and difficulties when they could be solving it. But it, before you can start to help them to solve it, you need to bring it first and foremost to the front of their mind. You need to call their attention to it so that you can then start to um, move them through this process of uh, the, the whole sales pitch and the whole copywriting process. Having reminded them they've got a problem, you need to uh, get closer to them emotionally. You need to um, tell them that you understand that uh, it's not their fault, that um, it's something that everybody can suffer from, that it is something which you know has been causing them a great deal of difficulty. And you do understand and you do feel strongly you know, that it's um, something you want to help them with. You need to connect to them on an emotional level before you can really start to go any further with this process. Then you deepen the experience still further. So you are taking them uh, to a point where you tell them that you understand them, that you know what it's like, <clears throat> that you had this problem, you know what it feels like, um, and you share your experience with them of the problem. So in a sense, you put yourself side by side with them emotionally and in their minds that you've had this problem with them, you know what it's like, and you know you really understand that it's not their fault. So you're, you're becoming a sort of trusted, close um, person, you're bonding with them, but it's all at an emotional level so that they feel comfortable and happy that at last they found somebody who really understands them. But unfortunately, before you can make things better, you have to make things worse. You need to move them from frustration to their problem to a point of fear about their problem. And the fear has to be fear of failure, fear of missing out, a, a fear um, that they are in a situation which is now going to cause them real problems in the short term. So you need to heighten that anxiety because it's only from that fear that when you give them the solution and you make them feel so much better, they're going to get a big wallop of um, positive, warm feelings inside them. You know, the hormones will kick in, whatever the, the enzymes are that buzz around your brain. Um, and that, that will then... Um, help them to go from being very low to being very high and you can then proceed with your process. Of course you have to push the competition out the way and there is an art to doing this. You can't just say that the competition is rubbish. You've actually got to explain to them and convince them that you are the person who can solve their problem. You are the person they should be working with to get this done. Yes of course the there is you know other solutions out there but that one won't work and that one's too expensive and and you know this guy is well, you know he's is he's not had a lot of success with his product but you know you have and you have got the solution that they need so you need to push your competitors to the side so they just focus on what you have to offer them and then you can you can offer them your solution you can offer them the problem solving uh system or framework or whatever it is you put together to solve their problem. You can reveal the prize, 
that they will want to strive out for and grab and take control of. So you share your solution with them and you lift them from that point of anxiety and depression and fear. And you say, and that is why I created X, Y, and Z. And here's the product and the solution. But having at this point attracted their interest, you now have to convert that interest into desire. So you need to explain the benefits succinctly of the product or service that you're offering. This has to be very easily communicated, very easy to understand. But you don't talk about features. You definitely talk about the benefits. It's the, this does this so that it can help you, so that it can do this for you, so that it can benefit you in this way. Benefits, not features. And if you have a unique selling point and there has to be something unique about your system, and this is the point to explain it to them. Now you can tell them, to go ahead and enroll, to buy from you. Take that step, take that decisive step to solving their problem. And you give them the call to action, which is telling them to do what you want them to do, which is to go out and do whatever they have to do to buy your product. But however you describe it, make the process and the description as simple as possible so that it becomes a very, very easy thing for them to go and do. Of course, having encouraged them to make the purchase, you need to make it an absolutely risk-free purchase. So you have to offer some form of guarantee, some form of no quibble, money back. Don't worry about it. If this doesn't work for you, I'm so confident it's going to, I'm going to give you your money back. And if they feel that they're, they're taking a completely no-risk step, that will make it much easier for them to buy. I have one or two refunds on one or two of my course things, but they're minute. I sell thousands and thousands of courses and I get refunds in the single figures. So there may always be somebody who's going to come back to you, but the numbers are going to be very, very low and nothing as compared to the numbers who will buy. And without that guarantee, they won't. And of course, now you have to close out the pitch. You need to make your solution feel like it's just at the edge of their fingertips. And it is, it's on the edge of their fingertips on their keyboard. And they just have to press the right buttons to make the purchase. But you do need to have this strong close to bring the whole pitch together. And having taken them through this roller coaster of emotions, you now have to drive home the point that you want them to take action and to do it and to, to buy the product. And this course is reinforced by effective postscripts. P.S. This has a further call to action. It reinforces the benefits. But you can also introduce urgency and scarcity because in any sales process, you want people to take action now. You don't want them to wait because if they wait, it'll never happen. Once their attention is onto something else, that's it. You've lost the sale. So you really need them to take the action immediately while you have them on your website you have them on the page you want them to do what you want them to do so to summarize and it's worth using this 12th point just to reinforce some key message messages you need to keep the whole process and the description and the copywriting simple make it as easy to read as possible with bullets and short paragraphs and you know uh, italicizing and emboldening the text make it as easy as it can be to read maybe put some images in uh, make sure the process is logical and step by step and ensure that all the psychological patterns we've been talking about have been pushed so let's talk now about some other aspects of copywriting. I've given you the sort of the psychology of the sales process that your scripts are going to have to follow. And it's effectively the why are you doing this? Why are you writing it in this way? So here now we'll go into a little framework which actually takes you through some of the uh, key steps in the copywriting process. The first of these is AIDA. And you need to have this in mind whenever you're writing any copy. What we've effectively talked about in this, um, this psychological process is AIDA. It's attention, interest, desire, action. You get their attention, you remind them of the pain. You get their interest because you reinforce their pain and then you give them a solution. They're interested. You then make them afraid of missing out. So they have their desire enhanced. And finally, you tell them what you want them to do which is to call to action, which is to buy your product. Make sure that you know who you're writing to. Understand your audience. 
we often talk about having an avatar in uh, copywriting. This is an image of the person you're writing for. And it's very important that you focus on your avatar when you're when you're writing your copy and you address the needs of the person that you have in your mind. Do not try and write a piece of copy for the whole world. The more you target your audience, the more effective your writing will be. And you have to know the pain point that they're suffering. And if you understand your audience properly, you'll know why they're suffering a pain and what it is. But it's this pain you have to focus on because without the pain, you can off not offer a solution. Everybody will raise objections to why they shouldn't buy your product. And these are objections which are sometimes not vocalised. They're sometimes in the back of people's minds. And you really have to address them. Uh, you have to call them out on them and you have to dismiss them and explain why they're not going to happen. Here are the four most common. First of all, time. I haven't got time to do this. And this, the answer to that is, well, you actually can't afford not to spend the time doing it because of the impact it's going to have on your life. You're making a very bad time judgment if you think that your time is so valuable, you should be doing other things when actually the, what you really need to do is solve your pain and solve your problem and spend the time doing it by going down this road. Money, they say, well, I haven't got enough money. I can't afford to do this. And again, the answer is, well, you can't afford not to because look at the impact it's having. Look how much you're fa falling further behind your competition. But if you actually take action now, then you're gonna save money because you're gonna be so much more successful. It won't work for me. And again, this links with the last one, which is I don't believe you. And this is about convincing them that, that one, you're the person who can help them. And secondly, your solution will work. And you can do that best with uh, testimonials by having other people who have used your product or solution, leaving some sort of message, video, written, whatever it is, saying, and this is why re uh, reviews are so important, saying, yes, I think this is great. It worked for me. People will believe other people, even if they don't know them, more than they're likely to believe you because they know you're pitching something to them. But if a third party comes in and said, yes, I bought this, I tried it, and it works, then that'll feel them, make them feel much more comfortable, much more happier about buying the product or service. Scarcity is something you have to build into your writing. And the whole point behind this is we always want what we can't have. I mean, try it next time you're talking to somebody, um, offer them something, make something appear that, you know, available and then actually take it away from them and see how much that heightens their desire for it. Another issue we need to think about, and we come back now to the attention in AIDA, is, is effective headlines, because it's the headline that gets the initial attention. It's the, the title of this video. It's the title of this course. I deliberately wrote, are you struggling with copywriting? I'm, I'm a basically reminding you of your pain that you've been having difficulty with copywriting and I wanted to get your interest in the video by putting that title in. So remember how important headlines can be. Endorsements and social proof I've just touched upon. It's a really important part of any sales process. Now obviously you have to make a few sales first before you can get the endorsements but this is why um, I always do my best to get as many ratings and reviews for my products and services because it makes it so much easier to sell them the next time round. When you're writing any copy, keep it as readable and as simple and as easy to follow as possible. Not just in the structure and the framework of the content, but in the vocabulary, the grammar and the syntax that you use. Try to keep it as simple as possible and assume a reading age of grade eight. And if you aim at grade eight and you don't start getting all complicated with very long words, then it's going to be a very, easy, very much easier for your reader to read what you've written. So there you are, there's a uh, sort of discussion and introduction into uh, copywriting and the important aspects of um, trying to address the psychology of copywriting, trying to address some of the things that your copy needs to include. And I hope you found this whole discussion very helpful. Uh, I've got lots of content on copywriting out there. Uh, there'll be a few links uh, below this video, depending on where you're watching it. And maybe you can follow those and take action. But don't forget to subscribe or to follow me wherever you're watching this video to make sure you don't miss any content in the future. So I hope you found that really helpful and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.